let's take the derivative of the inverse secant function. And I recommend that you watch the, the, the video where I take the derivative of the inverse sine function before you watch this one because I, I explained some, some of the steps in more detail in that last video. So this is just going to be more specific to the, arc, uh, the inverse secant function. So I'm going to write a placeholder again, arc secant x equals y, and then, then realize that that means that the secant of y must equal x. And now take, we're going to take this derivative here. So to take that derivative, it's just a chain rule. We get secant y tangent y times dy dx equals the derivative of x, which is just 1. And now we can solve for, for dy dx, and we get the derivative that we're after, dy dx, is equal to 1 divided by secant y tangent y. And now, well, we know secant y, y is the arc secant of x. So secant of the arc secant, those cancel out, we're just left with x. So this is equal to 1 divided by x times tangent y. And we, we know that we want this tangent to be a secant, so we can, we can cancel it just like we did in, in this last step. So why don't we go back and look at our Pythagorean identities again. So we have tangent squared y plus 1 is equal to secant squared y. So solve for tangent, subtract 1 and take the square root of both sides. And we get the tangent of y is equal to plus or minus the square root of secant squared y minus 1. And now this next step might seem a little bit baffling. And I'll explain it in, in a minute. But I'm going to write this as the absolute value of x times the positive square root of secant squared y minus 1. So how did I get from, from here to here? That's something we'll talk about in, in just a minute. So just trust me for one minute, and, and then I'll justify that in, in the near future. Okay, so let's continue here. So step five, we're going to do one over, and now we have the absolute value of x times by this square root, and then secant squared y. Well, that, we, we did that something very similar with, with um, sine squared y in the last video. We know that this is just going to be the secant of the arc secant, so that turns out to be just plain old x, and we're squaring it. So this ends up being x squared minus 1. And that is the derivative. That's, that's, that's what we're after. We've solved our problem. So this derivative is equal to 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Now how do we justify this absolute value and how do we justify taking the positive square root and not the negative square root? So, so those are the two things we have, to, we have to justify before we can be done with our answer. And it comes in this step, actually. Secant y times tangent y. So let's take a look. Oh, I meant to write, this is a graph of the arc secant function. So arc secant of x equals y. And again, y has some restricted values, right? The range of this function is restricted y is, is either is going to be between 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than pi over 2. So that's, that's uh, this case here, where y is 0 and then it approaches pi over 2, but it never quite gets there. Or y is greater than pi over 2, greater than pi over 2, and less than or equal to pi. Oops, not... Yeah, just pi. So that's this up here. We can see that it's it's greater than pi over two, and, and then it and then it uh, the highest it ever gets is pi. So this dotted or dashed line is pi over two. That's a horizontal tangent line. Okay. So we know what y is between. Oops. Well, that means that that we have it's between 
0 and pi over 2, so that's here, excluding pi over 2, of course. And it's between pi over 2 and pi, so that's here. So let me even, even write this. This is pi. So y is somewhere in there. Now let's see. If y is in this first quadrant, then secant is positive. Secant of y is positive. And secant, oh, sorry, and tangent of y is positive. So if y is somewhere in here, both are positive. If y is in this second quadrant, then secant of y is negative, and tangent of y is negative. So there, if one is positive, the other is positive. If one is negative, the other is negative. Well, if we go up to this step number two here, since they're multiplying each other, if they're both positive, then this result is positive. If they're both negative, well, they multiply each other, so this result is still positive. So we have to figure out a way to, to rewrite this as being always positive. So instead of taking the, uh, an, you know, making this, separating it into two cases, well, if, if one is negative, the other is negative, et cetera, et cetera, what we do is we just force it to be positive. We take the positive square root, so that's here, and then we just force x to be positive by, by taking the absolute value. So that's the justification uh, in, in this absolute value sign and, and the justification in taking the positive square root. Okay, I also wanted to mention, you may have seen or, or had an inkling of, of this, but uh, you could get the exact same result by using a different identity, which is arc secant of x is the same thing as the arc cos of 1 over x. And if you take this derivative, you, you should end up with the exact same result, although there's a little bit more algebra involved in, in getting this absolute value as opposed to just some, some reasoning that we did. Okay, anyways, I hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next video.